Hi everyone, and this is a review of my Telecaster kit build guitar from Coburn Guitars in the UK. This is my second kit build from Coburn Guitars. I've previously made a PRS style guitar, and for a change, I did the Telecaster style. And I think this has generally been more successful than the PRS style guitar for a number of reasons, primarily because it's a simpler guitar. And it doesn't, well, two reasons really. One, because it doesn't have the veneer, and I would recommend not having the veneer to be honest. I think it's more trouble than it's worth. And the second reason is that it's got a simpler bridge arrangement, and the, I think the uh, geometry of setting it up is much simpler on this than it is on the PRS with a uh, tunematic bridge. Now this guitar has got um, a spec that came with it and instructions. The instructions are the same as the previous ones are pretty ropey. I mean, again, several times on a page and a half it says go and look at YouTube to find out how to do stuff. It talks about a truss rod cover plate. Well, there isn't a truss rod co cover plate with this guitar. So I think co it's reasonable criticism of Coburn guitars that your instructions really aren't very great. Now the body of the guitar, it says on these instructions is ash. On the website it says mahogany. Uh, personally I'm not sure that it is mahogany so it's probably ash but I can't actually tell, I'm not an expert. The PRS I, I did was definitely mahogany and this is different. It has a maple neck and a maple fretboard. You can get them with uh, a rosewood fretboard. Um, it's got fairly basic tuners. They do work okay but they're not locking tuners or anything. They're fairly basic. I'm not sure what the nut it is. Let's have a look on here. It just says... Well it doesn't specify what the nut is made of so who knows. Um, I've coloured it and stained it with Crimson Guitars Stunning Stain and this is the royal blue colour. Now initially I thought it was coming out way too light a blue but then after a couple of coats of that I put on the Crimson Guitars Finishing Oil and it comes out what I think is really successfully with this dark blue colour. So I'm really pleased with that dark blue finish on it. Now Coburn Guitars have helped me out twice on this. Once, because I ought, you can order it with either a white pick guard or a black pick guard, I ordered the white one. Um, when it came to doing the blue finish, the white colour didn't really match, so Coburn Guitars agreed to do a swap. And so they swapped my, my unused white one for their unused new black one. And I think it looks really good with the black and Coburn Guitars. That's credit to them for changing that. Also, when I got to finish the guitar, I had a problem in that the tone, the tone pot didn't work and there was hardly any volume on any settings. And they sent me, so I emailed them and they got back to me really quickly. And I sorted it out the next day. It was just the jack socket. And now it works perfectly. So well done to uh, Coburn Guitars for helping me out. The back of the neck i done with um, boiled linseed oil all the way down there which gives a lovely smooth satiny feel to that there's no stickiness at all I haven't done anything at all to the front of the fretboard so I'm not sure if I needed to put anything in on there at all if you do know put some comments down below that would be great um, one thing to be aware of is the bridge now this has got the three saddle arrangements, that's a vintage style bridge. None that I can see from Coburn, none te no Telecasters have got the six saddle bridge arrangement. So you're rather stuck with this three saddle one. And if you try to change it, then you need to be very careful because this is held down by four screws. If you want to put a six saddle bridge, they seem to all have three screws, so you can have to drill another hole in the body to fit a six saddle bridge. 
and then you need to make sure, and I suggest you measure it all beforehand, that where the, net, the bridge pickup goes lines up with the new bridge because when I've been looking on Amazon the, the dimension between the bridge pickup hole in the bridge and the holes varies quite a lot so you can buy the bridge and then the pickup won't fit in the hole underneath so you need to be well aware of what you're getting there. The finished guitar I'm really very pleased with actually um, I think it's a much more successful build than this. This is my previous PRS style guitar that I built. As much as I really, really like this guitar, I think the uh, geometry of setting up the bridge and the pickup heights is a bit complicated for a kit guitar. And I find that really rather awkward. The other thing I would say about this one as well, this PRS one, is that I've had to put a shim under the neck so as, I can, so as I can get the action to a low enough height that I think is acceptable. This Telecaster needed very little setting up because it's such a simple basic guitar. You don't need to do much. I've got the action very nice and low, the pickup heights are, are correct. The only thing that you get is with the three saddle arrangement, it's difficult to do the intonation but that's known beforehand because it's not an easy thing to do with three saddles. Um, what I have done though at the top is I have um, filed down the slots in the nut and with that I just use a pair, a set of feeler gauges to, that were the correct width and then I filed some slots across them and then, then used that to file down the uh, slots and that worked very successfully I must say so that's a nice easy way of doing it without paying tens and tens of pounds to buy a specific set of nut files I, I would do that again that was really quite successful. When I was setting up the neck to start with I did use um, my Crimson Guitars fret um, measuring instrument there to help me assess the level, the straightness of the neck and I did use this Crimson Guitars fret levelling beam which I bought, if I can get it out, there we are, which is a beam there, Crimson Guitars and you just put the um, emery cloth on it. I would recommend buying these and using these to set up the guitar, I think that's wor well worth it, it's made a huge difference. I do think the kit could be improved by the neck radius being different though. Standard telecasters I believe are 9 three quarter inches. This is much flatter. I think this is a 12 inch radius. And if um, all these kit suppliers could offer different radius necks, I think that would be an improvement. So what it boils down to is I think this has come out really well. Um, I'm not sure how other suppliers of kits um, work out. I don't know what their kits are like. I've only done Coburn guitars, but this one is really good. I'd recommend doing a Telecaster or probably a Stratocaster. I don't suppose I'm going to do a PRS or anything like that, a uh, Les Paul type thing. I think they're too complicated. Telecaster, it worked really well. It plays very, very nicely. It sounds terrific. I'll have a go in a minute on my amp. So how does this kit guitar, this Telecaster, compare against a Squire Bullet? So, what do I think? Well, I think they're pretty comparable actually. The, the um, Squire Bullet, I think, is a really, really good guitar. That You can pick these up for about 140 quid, something like that. This is more expensive because you're paying around that just for the kit and then you've got to buy all the um, extras after that. And so this has probably cost me about £200. If I wanted to go in and buy a guitar like this, well, you probably wouldn't be able to buy the exact thing, but you're probably talking probably 300 quid, I don't know, as a guess. 
40, that's saying to, I, st I think that's such a good deal, that's difficult to beat. This I think is really good as well, I've really enjoyed doing it and it's been really successful I think, so I think terrific.